I'd low key like let you arrest me. Like low key, like. Like low key. If anyone was gonna arrest me, it would like definitely be you. You know what I'm saying? I heard you the first four times. I wasn't sure, because you didn't like respond. Yeah, because you're kind of annoying. Really? You're gonna do me like that? You never had crumble before, right? Mm -hmm. It's gas, no. right? It's good, right? Oh, yeah. You've always wanted to try it, right? Yeah, fuck yeah. Mm -hmm. What do you give that one? Yeah. Three? Yeah. Zero. Mm -hmm. That one's fucking terrible. This one's weird looking, mm -hmm. huh? Yeah. What do you give that one? <laughs> no. Negative zero. Negative zero. So Drake's father just revealed his new outfit. And let me say this. Drake, tell your dad to stop shopping off of Timu. I ain't gonna lie. If my dad dressed like this, it's time to go in that retirement home. How do you say I'm with all these plays? But you boys trying to hock me, say I don't need a first bitch. I don't want no single body. I know this guy likes a good tickle. I'm if good. you weren't on the clock, you'd want a tickle right now. Maybe, but pa oh, what? I'm on the off clock. The He's on the clock. All right, off the clock? I'll be back later, boys. This is a canon event every young man has to go through. Have you ever found a girl and you're thinking to yourself, this woman is fire, she is perfect. Like she's bad, she got a personality on her. And y'all get along really well. And then two weeks to a month later, her mask begins to fall off. This woman who you thought was perfect, this woman who you thought was a catch, you realize this bitch is either crazy or she belongs to the streets. Like she'll snap on you for some stupid shit or she'll get triggered by something small or she'll tell you one of her bop stories once she feels comfortable. And then you're just like, damn, bro, it all makes sense now. And you understand this woman was never perfect. I understand why she was single now because she ain't shit and she's just like me. Look, I know it sucks, but you just gotta understand if she is single, there's a reason. There is a reason. If you materialistic, I can't even look your way, shorty. A woman say she can never look a man way who wouldn't give her money and buy her stuff. And it's not her fault. The problem is it's the goofy motherfuckers that don't know how to get females for real. So they just spend money on them just to get the females. Like that's the problem right there. And when they mess with dudes like that, they perception get messed up and they think every dude is supposed to spend money on them and all that shit. Like, I ain't your daddy, shorty. And I'm the type of motherfucker you can ask any girl I talk to. I get you shit. I take you on flights out of town, all that shit. But I'm doing that shit because I want to. And the only reason why I'm doing that shit for you because I see you not materialistic motherfucker that's trying to use me. Because soon as you ask me for some shit and I think you're trying to use me, shorty, you're not going to get a dollar from me. I ain't going to cap to you. I ain't going to lie. I put females through trial runs before I even put bread in their pockets. I ain't going to lie to you. Because if a female asks me off the back, oh, you got to take me on a date and all this shit just for me to hang out with her, negative. You booted, shorty. I ain't going to cap. Any female that be like, oh, you got to spend money on me. You got to take me on a date. I stop responding to them. I ain't going to lie to you. And they always end up texting me and be like, damn, so you ain't going to do it. I'm like, no, nah, shorty. I'm, I'm not here for that, shorty. I will hang out with you. We could chop it up. And if I decide you cool enough for me to, you know, spend bread on you and take you out somewhere with me, then that's how it's going to be. But you're not getting shit off the roof for me. That's not how it go. I tell women, go to those other guys. Get what you need for them. Once you're done getting what you need for them, come hang out with me. That's how it could go. Like, women is right. What one man won't do, another man will do. And I'm happy with that shit. Go to that man and you can get something else for me. That Dino. These are the best martial arts for you pot smokers. For you motherfuckers that all you do is smoke that za. And the martial art that you motherfuckers should all do is... Jiu-Jitsu, bro. 
BJJ, specifically the 10th planet system of Nogi Jiu Jitsu. Why, you may ask? Because in most gyms, you can literally smoke in the gym. <laughs> I've seen it firsthand. And furthermore, Jiu Jitsu uh, will keep your mind relaxed, your head relaxed. I've also heard that when you smoke while you do Jiu Jitsu, your mind becomes way more creative, which is why a lot of people in the 10th planet system use a specific type of BJJ that other people that train Jiu Jitsu don't have. And furthermore, I mean, Nate Diaz does it, bro. Nate Diaz is like the S tier pot smoker of MMA. Moreover, other than that, shit, I don't fucking know, bro. Maybe you could box or some shit, uh, kickbox, fuck. Just do fucking Jiu Jitsu, bro. You're not getting brain damaged. You'll just be chilling and shit. It's not like wrestling in which you're just fucking drilling and fucking going full force every single time just grinding <gasps> no jujitsu is just fucking just chill bro you don't roll like the world is ending and shit and life just becomes good bro but what do you guys think what are the best martial arts for pot smokers so another person comes forward against mr beast and this time it's his ex-girlfriend apparently she was dropping subliminals on her ig story she said at youtube you need to reevaluate who you're putting on the trending page heart now she could be talking about anyone but this is mr beast's ex and with all that's going on with mr beast it's obviously him and to confirm it she dropped another story which was basically like a book where she didn't directly name mr beast but she talked about the time where she was dating him when she was 19 to 21 years old and she said there was no user manual there was no instructions on how to deal with gaining a following quickly no cheat sheet on dating someone famous i did the best i could but i was not okay and she closed off with saying, I do not aim to take anyone down, just simply and explicitly tell you that there are scary people out there. People who will hurt you, use you, spit you out, and then tell you it's your fault. So once again, she didn't directly refer to Mr. Beast by name, but it was obvious that she was talking about them and their relationship. I don't know if Mr. Beast can get canceled, but if he keeps getting called out like this, he just might. Y'all let me know what y'all think about this. Brian Pumper. I know you're out there somewhere watching this. I just want to extend a helping hand. I've seen these lunatics out there pelting you with eggs. It's a cold world. It's a cruel world. Just know the 22 stick got your back. You want to make these problems go away? You want to be in the Lambo instead of waiting for the bus? Tap in. Tap in with me. Rappers that didn't know they was related to each other, this is small yet big world, cause how y'all didn't know y'all was related? First off, we got Fredo Bang and Boosie, if y'all ain't know, they cousins. But the crazy part about it, they didn't even know they was cousins at one point. Next, did y'all know Young Dolph and Juice World was related? Young Dolph said he didn't find out him and Juice was related until 2017. Last, we got Rico Reckless and Lil Reese. They're a little bit different because they're related by marriage. But I'm pretty sure they didn't know they was gonna be cousins by marriage. These are literally the baggiest jeans you can find in Atlanta. I don't know who the hell in 2024 is telling bro that this is drip, but they better not be his friends. Because if his friends are the one that's telling him he's putting that shit on, he needs to cut them off immediately. See, the problem with these jeans is not even just the aesthetic. If by chance this nigga had to run away from the ops or maybe he dropped something on the floor and he got to squat down to pick it up, I guarantee there is a 100% chance this nigga shits is splitting in half. Not only are jeans this tight not a good look, they're just not functional either. But the confusing thing about this is like, why not just go ahead and get the leggings? You clearly have no problems with space down there. You just want to rock some tight shit. Why not just cop the leggings? Because you could just imagine bro having to jump up and down just to get his fucking legs in these jeans. And that shit just seems ridiculous. Listen, bro, do better. Just do better. So Tony Ferguson just lost to Michael Chiesa and decided to put one glove down in case he has second thoughts about retiring. In fact, after the fight, he gave a speech saying that he doesn't want to leave the UFC and wants to think it over with his kids. And all I have to say to that is, 
Tony is the fucking retire, bro. Like, if it wasn't evident in his last fights, losing to Michael Chiesa out of all people. And yes, Michael Chiesa is a good fighter. But imagine a prime Tony Ferguson fighting Michael Chiesa. He would fucking destroy him. And losing in the first round to him out of all the people. God is telling this man to fucking retire, bro. Because prime Tony Ferguson was a man going to war, fucking bleeding, bloodbaths. This motherfucker's name was El Kakui. He was fucking up champions like Anthony Showtime Pettis. He was a fucking marauder, bro. And it's like, bro, you're not the same fighter you used to be. You went on a fucking training arc with David Goggins out of all people and still couldn't win. And it's not his fault. It's just his body fucking telling him. Everything's telling him you he needs to fucking retire. There's no, oh, one more shot, one more chance, just one more opera. Bro, I want the best for Tony Ferguson. And the best for Tony Ferguson is him fucking retiring. But what do you guys think? Am I chatting shit or should Tony Ferguson actually fucking retire? Listen, gang, I'm not a proponent of getting tattooed on the neck while not having any other tattoos on the chest, collarbone, or shoulder area. I'm just not a proponent of that. If you don't have tattoos on the arms, the chest, the collarbone, you, you just can't get a big ass neck tattoo. That's just not gonna look right. And I knew I wasn't the only one thinking this, right? All jokes aside, neck tattoos with almost no other tattoo is insane. And overall, I mean, this is just a terrible design. Like if you were to get a neck tattoo without having any other tattoos on the body, at least make it a dope design. This just looks really bad. It looks like you went on graffiticreator.com and typed out some things with a font and just threw it on the neck. Boss is with two S's also. I don't know if you knew that. But yeah, guys. This is I'm going to name two good live service games. Helldivers and Fortnite. What do these two games have in common? They're multiplayer games by definition. Now I'm going to name a bunch of shit live service games. Anthem. Marvel's Avengers. Skull and Bones. Ooh. And that famously bad DC game that just came out, which I'm not going to say the title because I don't know if TikTok will get mad at me. All single player fundamentally games. That is the difference between a good live service game and a bad live service game. The good ones are multiplayer games that have regular content updates because they're designed for live service. They are literally a game that is built upon the concept of ever-changing content. All these live service games that come out that are fundamentally just single player games and the live service aspect is just a storefront that updates. That's all it is. It's a way for you to pay money over and over and over again. This is why everybody thinks live service sucks. It actually doesn't when it's done well, when it's multiplayer, when it is built for that. When it's not built for that, it's just a cash grab. Next, rise. Bro's been rising for the past two months. You know, Mustache Man 23, at this point, you're dragging Gen X rise more than Ninja dragged the fucking low taper fade. The 2024 meme calendar was supposed to look like this all low taper fade. And not this, Gen X rise coming in and intruding. Because at this point, this just looks like public humiliation. And then after I made a video, you claim that your entire account was satire. But here you are, 39 minutes ago, still rising with Gen X. You know, part of me is starting to think that this isn't satire. You're just trying to be like Ninja and drag out your little trend. It's fucking over! You're not Ninja! Just put the fries in the bag, bro. Would you take $50,000 to never listen to Little Baby again? I'm going to answer that question with a question of my own. Why is that price even that high? This is Little Baby. This is not Michael Jackson. This question is like a question that a teacher puts on a test as a bonus question just so that students can get bonus points. It's literally automatic. Not only would I easily take the 50,000, but I don't know anyone on planet Earth out of 8 billion people that wouldn't take the 50,000. There is no one that is that big of a little baby fan. And I think if we're being really, really honest, even little baby himself would take the 50,000. Who are we kidding? A more accurate and fair price to make this question debatable would be something like 50 to $100. And then even then, I would still take the 50. This is no hate to little baby by the way, it's just that his music isn't that life changing. Y'all let me know if I'm wrong though. Y'all let me know if you would choose different. Complex about to get the biggest lawsuit known to man. So yesterday we all know that um, Kai's cameraman, Chris, has been exposed for talking to a minor. 
Okay. Complex being late as hell to the situation, put out the news about it saying a member of the AMP collective, Chris V, aka Chris Next Door, has been accused. And they put the wrong Chris. It was Kai's cameraman, not Chris, the ones that's actually in the group. They put his name and his picture, bro. Like, what are y'all doing? Do y'all do y'all not do y'all research? Clearly you didn't. How you late to putting something out like this? And you got the information wrong. You got the wrong person. That is crazy. Like, bro, you can ruin bro's reputation for posting this. It just really goes to show you, like, people like Complex, they don't care, bro. They don't care. They, they, they gon', they gon', they be so quick with putting out news, even though sometimes they can be late. But they ready. They ready to cancel with somebody, bro. Even if it's the wrong person, they don't care. They're just trying to make their quick money and, and dip. Even still a police officer, audio recording reveals that Deputy Sean Grayson was previously reprimanded for making false reports prior to the fatal shooting of Sonya Massey. So basically, y'all knew this man was not a good officer and y'all still allowed him to be an officer. That shit crazy as hell. That's why I say y'all should not trust the police, try to work with the police because they be allowing any types of motherfuckers to become the police. I ain't gonna lie, Sonya would probably still be alive if they didn't let this motherfucker become a police officer. I ain't gonna lie to you because once you know motherfuckers doing some messed up shit, you shouldn't have allowed them to be doing those type of jobs. Like certain jobs cannot have certain type of people.